While you're still watching, good morning, Nigeria, reaching you live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. As we indicated, we, of course, are going to have uh, two topics for conversation this morning. If uh, we're able to get across to our Kaduna uh, Network Center, we'll, of course, be speaking to the uh, Kaduna State Commissioner for uh, Internal Security to indicate to us uh, what the latest development is. Right there, he's there on the screen, and you can uh, see him on the right side of the screen. Uh, this is on the release of the students uh, who were abducted from the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, AFACA, in Kaduna State some 56 days ago. Uh, so let's now welcome the Honorable Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, uh, Samuel Aruwa. Pleasure to have you with us on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you for having me. Good morning. All right. Good news out of Kaduna yesterday and uh, tremendous relief for the parents, guardians, and well-wishers, and particularly also for the Kaduna state government. What is the state of uh, the students that have just been released? Well, as we speak, uh, the students are undergoing a thorough medical uh, checkups. Uh, in view of uh, the situation they have found uh, themselves uh, within uh, the last uh, seven uh, weeks. Uh, this is a situation uh, at the moment. Uh, medical doctors and uh, other professionals uh, who are vast in managing trauma and other uh, challenges are attending to them and uh, they are responding from uh, where I left them uh, last night and uh, we are happy with this development and uh, we are also grateful uh, to all that made this uh, a reality and we are also using this uh, opportunity, uh, like we told the student yesterday, uh, during our first uh, conversation with them, that uh, they should look at this as uh, a motivator. They should put all that happened uh, behind them. Uh, and they should press on uh, towards a successful uh, future that uh, lies uh, ahead. We also explain uh, to them uh, the situation as, as it we find ourselves uh, within uh, the time that uh, they were uh, in uh, captivity. And uh, we are happy with the response. And it may also interest you uh, to know that uh, there is no uh, any uh, evidence that uh, warrants that uh, some of uh, the female students were in any way uh, harassed uh, in high spirit and by the special grace of God uh, once were through with uh, these uh, checkups, uh, they will definitely uh, rejoin uh, their families and loved uh, ones. Well, Commissioner Aruan, congratulations once again. Is it true that it's not all of them that have been released? Is it just a media hype or what? Or have they all been released? I can uh, confirm to you that uh, all the students of federal uh, College of Forestry uh, Mechanization uh, that uh, we are kidnapped on the 11th of March uh, 2021 are all uh, free. Uh, none of them is in uh, captivity. Tell us, uh, is the college open or it's closed? Can you come again? I said, tell us, is the College of Forestry Mechanization, AFACA, is it open at this time or it's short? Uh, well, uh, administratively, uh, the institution uh, 
is uh, operating. But academically, uh, in view of uh, what uh, happened, uh, certainly uh, there is uh, unintended break as a result of uh, the unfortunate uh, incident. But uh, what is important is the fact that we've gotten all the students. Oh, well, Commissioner, um, after your interaction with you, I mean with the students, uh, could you share with us uh, some of their thoughts, especially in captivity, and uh, what the public needs to know about that? Well, uh, it's true. Um, we have a case in our hands, and uh, we've never denied uh, the, rea the reality of our situation as we speak. Uh, we have students of Green uh, Shield uh, University who uh, we have a number of uh what should we expect with regard to the students of uh, Greenfield University who are still in captivity? We know that it's a fairly sensitive... ...university. What, what do we know at this time and what should we expect? Well, I will, we will rather keep our heart uh, close to our chest uh, on that uh, issue. Uh, like you rightly pointed out, uh, security issue is very sensitive and is very strategic. Uh, there is no gain uh, when you make a comment that uh, will likely undermine uh, all the efforts that are being uh, put in place. Uh, the long and short is we are on our feet and we are optimistic that at the end of the day, uh, things will work out well uh, for us. And I am equally using this uh, opportunity uh, to assure the parents and the university uh, management and those that are following event uh, in uh, the state and beyond that uh, Kaduna State Government is conscious and alive of its uh, responsibility and uh, we will do all that is within our reach uh, to ensure that uh, we get out of uh, this uh, challenge by the special grace of God. I wish you all the best uh, Commissioner Internal, Internal Security that is and Home Office Samuel Aruan. We thank you for joining us on Good Morning Nigeria this morning. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll now take a break before we come back to our real discussion on the... All right, we have a package, really, which are supposed to go ahead and then s look at it and then say uh, what is it for us forging a common front for national cohesion. And I think uh, Joseph Otten has done that package for us. Listen on this clip to him. <laughs> need to work with traditional rulers because traditional rulers knows the people in the com their community and their community head can first can ask questions and know who what happens to what what's what led to what to what happened to what is happening and by then they'll be able to face out exactly what is happening and be able to sort it out each community in this country has youth leaders how far has the government engaged them to now engage their uh, uh, other fellow youths in their community. So it is our time that the government should see reasons to quickly call on National Youth Security Summit that will have to come from community down to the national. Then, these youth leaders knows the bad eggs in their community, which they know their weaknesses, their weak points of how the government can call them together and ask them, what do you want? Because a lot of youths are not employed, and I told you earlier that because of uh, the lack of equitable distribution of wealth, they see others who are riding heavy, heavy vehicles, and they have also gone to school. The pain which 
the, the pain they are going through is what they unleash on the other members of the societies by trying to uh, bring their own point home. that I have a stake in this business. Now, what we can do is for all of us to, to, rel to just calm down. All these sentiments, you can just drop them for now and work with the government. If the government is not willing to change, then we can change the government because the people are the government. It is the people who you put in to represent you that are leading you. So if the government is not working, we can change the government. But for now, let's just come down and see how we can work with the, with the government to make sure we are out of this problem within the shortest possible time before it deteriorates further. All right, a cross-section of uh, Nigerians there expressing their views on the current situation in the country and how to forge a common consensus for national peace and cohesion. With us in the studios now, to uh, discuss this issue further, I would like to welcome an elder statesman, uh, his uh, Major General IBM Haruna. Uh, he's more famously known by his initials IBM, which stands for Ibrahim Batal Magawi uh, Haruna. <laughs> he was uh, Federal Commissioner for Information. Uh, they were called Federal Commissioners before 1979 when we had the Second Republic. So a Federal Commissioner at that time was the equivalent today of a minister. Major General IBM Haruna, also a lawyer and a king golfer. Pleasure to have you with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Okay. Also here with us in the studios, uh, we have uh, Ambassador Obizoba Chiemelu. Uh, according to the information we have, is Director General of Strategic Planning and Implementation of Ohanese and Dibu General Assembly Worldwide. Pleasure to have you with us this morning. Thank you very much. I also have a regular face here in the studio, former Permanent Secretary, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Joe Keshi. It's a delight to have you once again. Good morning, Nigeria. Good, mo good morning. Nice to see you. <coughs> okay. Uh, uh, we're supposed to get a guest uh, to join us. Uh, from, from Lagos, Lagos, right? Once our connection uh, is uh, sorted out by the engineers, we'll, of course, get to introduce the the guest. Uh, in the meantime, gentlemen, these are fairly challenging times for us as a people and, and uh, also as, as a country. There are daily reports of insecurity in terms of banditry, kidnapping, terrorism, uh, violent crimes and attacks on security personnel and their formations. General IBM Haruna, beginning with you, what's your reading of our national situation today? Hmm. It is um, some growing dynamics of uh, unease. Um, with diverse perceptions as to what is going on. My perception may not agree, perhaps with yours, or with that of others. But I have been fixed on a kind of prediction or prophecy that Nigeria was destined to break up by 2017. But the concert of uh, many political developments has not made that to happen. Uh, whether it will still happen or not will depend on how we come out from the present um, challenges uh, which we are facing. Primarily what I see as a basic challenge is the mismanagement of our diversity. Flowing from when we came out of the Civil War in 1970, it was said and agreed and probably, uh, probably also advanced 
that um, there are no victors, no vanquished. But over time, as we have arrived at this present situation, we seem to have evolved a situation where some groups see themselves as victims, some as vanquished, some as victors. We have come to that situation where certain sections of our nation see themselves as slaves. Some sections in their narratives are seen as masters. Some sections in our present dispensation see themselves as colonizers or they are being dubbed colonizers and some as irrelevant minorities. What has led us to this kind of attitude towards ourselves is priming us for destruction. And um, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a clear court definition by the government as to what direction they are to drive the emotions and sentiments of the people in general. As a result, I think there is messages of hatred, disaffection, desire for perhaps anarchy or uncontrolled situation. I think government should be blamed for evolving this situation because they themselves do not seem to settle on the purposes of, of their existence at this particular time in Nigeria. In spite of the Constitution, the legislature has not passed very important basic bills to do with um, elections, to do with um, uh, the most important industry, the Petroleum Industry Bill, and other major directions they should have legislated on, like um, amending the 1999 Constitution to suit the experiences we have had. In 20 years, no perfection has been driven towards getting the separation of powers really working in sync. With the result that um, the provisions of the Constitution and the basic perceived contracts between government and the people seem to be overlooked. The, the security, welfare, protection of uh, property and life has been very fundamental. It's uh, protected by the fundamentals, uh, provide, uh, um, uh, free, um, fundamental fundamental objectives, objectives mm. and, and directed um, principles of state yes, policy. And, uh -huh, yes. and, uh, the freedom of the citizens and the declarations of uh, human rights. These values are entrenched in the, in the Constitution. But the Constitution itself has not um, been accepted and endorsed by the people. Significant uh, proportion of the Nigerian citizenry believe that the Constitution was imposed and lacks the basic fundamental um, legitimacy and therefore challenge not only the Constitution but also 
challenge the powers of the makers of the Constitution. And I think here it has brought into sharp contest between a significant proportion of the people and um, the government. Okay. Um, uh, but lastly, I think there's an yeah. important point I want to make yeah. here. The present president voted in is a soldier, a military man from the same stable that I came from, from 1966 to date. Mm. He turned a politician, and I think the politicians don't like it, and he seems to be f fueling the idea that this is a chance to finally do away with the military um, influence and governance. So we are at this stage strictly challenged by insecurity, contrived, and, cons and perhaps orchestrated, and um, the reluctance to see forthcoming explanation of events uh, seems to also make this decision very difficult to predict. Oh, well, thank you, uh, IBM Haruna, for that opening uh, salvo, I would say. Um, we also have a guest, Willie. We really say we're expecting somebody from Lagos, and of course, uh, Alhaja Sinatu Ojukutu, the former deputy governor of Lagos, is online with us. You're welcome to Good Morning Nigeria. It's nice to be here. Thank you very much. Now, while you settle down, let me get across to Ambassador Obizoba Chimelu, uh, the Ohanese, rather the uh, Director General of Strategic Planning and Implementation, uh, Ohanese in the Igbo General Assembly worldwide. From the opening salvo of uh, uh, IBM Haruna, we could just see how, you know, the bigness and the diversity in this country has been mismanaged, uh, but it's resulting in this situation we find ourselves in now, and so much so that we're trying to find a common front in order to forge a national cohesion uh, at all costs in order to run away from the, you know, negatives that may follow. Do you share in this view or idea that we've really mismanaged our diversity? Yeah, thank you very much. I think I share the same view. Our problems didn't start today. The lack of trust, the lack of understanding is fueling a lot of agitations. There are major challenges today is caused by our political elite because they no longer talk connect to the people and people are not being carried along to know what their activities are and there's every part of the country is feeling agitated because things are not working well just like he mentioned as a result of our constitution especially the electoral act i expect to be in my house to vote by to, uh, coming to 2023. But up to date, the amendment of the electoral act has not been attended to by the National Assembly. The issue we need to address and urgently is to engage the people. Once people are properly engaged and you sell your programs and activities to them, you carry them along in formulating the policies and programs of the government you will see that the agitations in security will return. The fundamental issues we have is the youth. We have not managed our youth population. Our strength is in diversity, no doubt about it. Some quarters are calling for national conference. And I have the view that there is no need for national conference anymore because the previous administration led by President Goodluck Jonathan 
convoke a national conference where the elites gather, sit down to discuss. And there's one fundamental thing he told them. He said the unity of the country is sacrosanct. He was very specific. The, well, for us to address the issue of insecurity and the social justice in the system, we have to engage our youth. The youth must have a enabling environment to learn. They must have a enabling environment to participate in governance. No, no, no one person from the south, the west, the east, of age of 670 and above can go to the bush and carry arm against his people. It's the youth. If the youth are properly engaged, just like the, the report you just showed, the, the, the man who was speaking, I, was, I, I, I shared the same view with him. The community leaders, the traditional rulers, must be given constitutional, was given constitutional role. Because the traditional ruler and the youth leader know the people. We lack, we have challenges today for family values because these people didn't come from sky. The man who takes arm against the people is coming from a family and is known by his people. Every community knows the bad eggs. If the traditional rulers are not being protected by the constitution, because the constitutional role has not been given to them, most of the traditional rulers are even aiding and abating these people because they believe that it's their people. But if they give them the constitutional role, protect their, their interests and their, their positions, they will fish out the people who are perpetrating this evil against their own people. <coughs> No doubt about the agitation of marginalization. Ohanes and the Bojara Assembly worldwide have set up committees to deal with certain issues because we are sensitizing our people so that we understand where we are going. We have also set up a committee on National Youth Summit because the youth must be engaged the youth must be properly engaged for us to come out of this mess. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador uh, Chair Miller. We'll return to you in the course of the conversation. Uh, just before we bring in uh, Ambassador Joe Keshi, let's return to our Lagos Network Center where we uh, earlier introduced uh, the former Deputy Governor of Lagos, uh, Alhaja Ojikutu. Your Excellency, uh, once again, I'd like to have you with us on, on Good Morning Nigeria. I, I wouldn't know whether you heard the opening comments by the Major General IBM Haruna. Uh, in brief, he was saying that we are having a, a growing dynamics of unease in the country. And that, of course, there are diverse perceptions as to what is going on uh, on the basis of the mismanagement of our diversity and the consequences uh, that we are seeing, whether in terms of violent crimes or, or agitation for dismemberment, uh, banditry, kidnapping, and terrorism. Again, I ask you the same question that I asked him. What is your reading of what is happening in different parts of the country? Good morning, Nigeria. Uh, it's getting to be frightening. It's gradually becoming frightening. It's really when you hear every day tales of people being kidnapped, tales of uh, farmlands being devastated, tales of um, even right now in Lagos, we're having people in our so-called uh, el uh, elitist area, Ikoyi and Victoria Island and Lekki, the people are being stopped in their vehicles. In the daytime, we're just praying that it will not, you know, become more frequent, that the uh, police will rise up to the situation and curb it. So it, it, uh, the general has uh, actually said it. Unfortunately, I, I didn't hear most of what he said, but 
the situation needs to be properly handled. And um, the way to handle it, you know, the government is the people, and the people is the government. It seems as if, you know, the government has uh, disengaged from the people. They are not carrying the people along. The information dissemination is practically nil. And people feel disenchanted. People feel nothing is happening. And uh, people are not secured. They are not feeling secured. Even going out from your area to another area now, people are frightening. So um, I, I'm not trying to be an alarmist. I'm saying what is on the ground here now. To travel between Lagos and Ibadonao, you have to plan very well. And you have to make sure that you don't let out that you are even traveling because you don't know the enemy within. It, it, uh, it's like um, uh, the security network, even within, within the people who are supposed to secure, you are not sure who is your enemy. And um, the more reason now that uh, ransoms are being paid is making them to be more, you know, bold, to be bolder in carrying out these acts. And it's not as if anybody is trying to uh, make people to be afraid, but people who, to whom is, uh, uh, who are affected are, are crying out after they have paid the ransom. So our, our diversity, you know, we are in, in, in Lagos State here is a mini Nigeria. We have all tribes, you know, and shades of people here. And um, um, the government of the day is really trying to be on top of the situation uh, with the uh, police, but it's like, is being overwhelmed because people flock in every day and um, most of them have nothing to do. Most of them are not engaged in any business. People are now afraid of the Okada riders. There are so many that if today they decide to descend on the populace, uh, I don't know how we're going to, uh, to survive. Recently, there was a, a situation in a university, a Lagos State University where there was a um, tumult between the Okada riders and the police, we understand. And they decided they were going to enter the university. But fortunately, the students rose up to the occasion. So things like this need not to come up. If people are engaged in trade, in business, or in one profession or the other, but the employment rate and the influx from the interior is aggravating the situation. Thanks, Haja uh, Ojikutu, uh, former deputy governor of Lagos State. Um, Ambassador Keshi, you've heard them talk. And it's uh, no news today that uh, people are living, you know, precariously. And of course, a lot of uh, issues are there facing and challenging <coughs> people. She mentioned some of them. IDF Haruna mentioned some of them. And of course, uh, Ubezoba did the same thing. What's your reading? Uh, good morning again. Uh, let me start by applauding uh, the retired uh, general for the beautiful summary he made about the situation in the country. And, uh, I really like the fact that he zeroed in on the mismanagement of our diversity, which is true. We, we mismanage our diversity for a number of reasons. One, the absence or the failure of consistent leadership over time, particularly leaders with the knowledge and understanding of how to deal with a multicultural society like like us, today we do not have anybody, anybody in position of leadership that is speaking for this country, that is trying to rally around this country as one united nation. After the, after the crisis in uh, Rwanda, 
which lost how many people? Close to almost a million people. The gentleman who took over, who is the president today, changed the dynamics and got everybody to realize that, listen, we are no longer Tutsis, we are no longer um, Hutus. Hutus. Mm. We are Rwandese. The general, as the commissioner for information, remember that during the war, the people of this country were mobilized for a common purpose for the uh, territorial integrity of this country. And immediately after the war, the three hours, rehabilitation and the rest of them, in order to integrate. When Gawan said that there was no vanquish and there was no um, uh, Victor. Victor, it perfectly worked for us. But today, what, what do you have? No justice, no fairness, no equity. In a society where you have no justice, no fairness, and no equity, don't talk of cohesion. There will never be. In a society where people are deliberately marginalized, don't talk of cohesion. There will never be. And yet, if you think the people of this country hate this country, let Green Eagles play a match tomorrow. You will see all Nigerians rally around. What does that tell you? It tells you that it is the leadership that is mismanaging this country in almost all facets. All our institutions are broken down, including the one you left behind the military. They are so overstretched, they are even accused of complicity in the crisis. The police is worse. So who is going to mobilize? Who is? Look, in those days, you would go during the military rule. The military was described as the unifying force. Nobody is calling for military. Forget the talk about military coup. It is a frustration of the people, the anger that is making them go to this. And interestingly enough, mm. those, <laughs> some of those who are talking of coup or no coup today were those who voted, campaigned for the regime in power today. Mm. But the point I want to make is <coughs> when your institutions have all broken down and you can't see, you take a look, you can't see anybody, anybody talking of rebuilding the institutions. I grew up in a society that there were a lot of influences. Apart from my parents and the church, my teachers were very influential. Today, the teachers don't influence, can't even influence anybody. There were, in those days, I make this point all the time, university lecturers led public debate. They led public debate. They wrote in Daily Times and other newspapers in those days. Today, you don't find anybody from the university engaging in national debates. So who is influencing the youth? I can begin to name the, those who had influence on me growing up whether in this country or who today, out of all our political leaders, who today is influencing the youth? There's no employment. And if you don't, put, if you don't have uh, employment, what do you want the people to do, the young, the young ones? There's no local government. In one of the studies that was done about Zamfara, it was reported that in the rural area where the banditry started from, there was completely no absence, I mean, no presence of governance or government. What does that tell you? And yet, people collect money on a monthly basis for that local government where there was no structure. If I had no government structure. So when you hear everybody complaining, not just that people are complaining, but they are frustrated. It is a frustration that you can't go out. You can't even ride from your place. Even, in, uh, even here in Abuja, people use, every day you see information, look, be careful when you are doing this, when you are doing that. It's, it looks as if we have been, there's a state of siege. 
And in that situation, you can't predict what people will do. And yet, as I say all the time, <laughs> and I refer to this uh, music, uh, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in that beautiful uh, music, it says the solution has been there all the time. The solution to, have, to this country's problem is not outside. It's not getting uh, African here. It's not getting any troops here. It's not even staging a coup. The solution is just for the leadership to live up to expectation, to live up to the constitution. Listen, the constitution is not as bad as we think it is. It is the people who are operating the constitution who just have refused to do what the constitution says they should do. The constitution talks of fairness, justice, and equity. It talks of the protection of the security of the people. It talks of providing employment for the people. This is where the government has failed the people. And except, and the, and the tragedy, the tragedy of what we are saying is that you look, at the, you look into the future. You don't see anybody in the leadership position rising up to say, look, I'm going to mobilize these people towards a common goal. But he said every day, as everybody has said, it's just a, you just get up. Two days ago, I told the guy who supplied me, I said, look, I'm not sure I want to buy newspapers anymore. I'm tired of reading bloody headlines and things like that. And you ask the question, where for goodness sake is the leadership? Are they not listening? Are they not reading newspapers? Are they not unhappy about what's going on? And then you get the DSS to issue statements. The job of the DSS is not to issue statements to us. It is to protect us, provide information to government to make informed decisions. The military job is not to pledge loyalty to government. It is to protect this nation. And everybody lists what they should do, and they are doing something else. It's not regime protection. It is we all belong to this country. And until this country breaks up, which I don't pray for, some of us will continue to insist that the leaders whom we voted for must be held account accountable, they must be held responsible to do what the Constitution says they should do. Very simple, fairness, justice, equity, period. And I make the point, you cannot marginalize people and believe they will keep quiet. It's impossible, even when you create wealth and they still feel marginalized they will protest. Ambassador Joe Keshe, thank you very much. Uh, I want to bring in again um, Major General IBM Haruna. I want you to just respond to aspects of what Ambassador Keshe has said with regard to the failure of leadership. Uh, when we say leadership, uh, our viewers should get the fact that leadership refers to all spheres of life, economic, political, uh, intelligentsia, and, and all of that. And even in the political, it refers to all the tiers of government, all the instruments that you need uh, to converse for and get power and then function uh, in, in government. So it talks about the apparent leadership deficit that we are facing. And one of the things he said is that, for instance, out of our political leaders, who today is influencing the youth. And uh, Ambassador Chiemelu had also indicated that our youth appear to be a neglected, significant population. And still, I know you listen to him, but I'm just highlighting this key point so that you can respond to them, that the solution has been there all along. It's inside, not external. As my response will start with the political system. When we abandoned the parliamentary system, we abandoned the leadership of uh, first among equals. A resolution in the parliament can dissolve the political leadership. Today in the presidential uh, system and the separation of powers, definitely taking charge of issues coming from day to day is that of the president. And a mere resolution in the House cannot move him unless he's impeached. So one expects a lot from the presidential system.
from the president. The leadership should not end from having campaigned and then getting elected. That leadership where you have to mobilize the people, mobilize them to be behind the government's chosen way by always taking them along. This government came on the platform of eradicating insecurity, attacking corruption, improving on the economy of the country. Now, we have had something like the COVID-19 and other developments in the financial system. But no campaign to explain how we will tackle with this new challenge. It was not there when the campaign for election was up. But it has now come uh, into the environment. Now, leadership must stand up and lead and explain and go along with the people because good governance is not just for the party in power, the party in opposition, and the, pap uh, the people to whom government owes good governance. Now, I think with regards to the leadership and the orientation of the youth, in the modern climate in which we have found ourselves, the youth stand out, but it includes female and male youth. It also includes the hosts of unemployed qualified people and, un and uh, unemployed untrained people and children not given the opportunity to be in school. These are challenges of governance. But government has upon his, its basic responsibility the protection of life and property. We find insecurity means no protection of life and property where hoodlums are taking over. And the administration of life and property devolves on government. And in our own instance, we have a constitution that provides that uh, land belongs to the people, but vested in government in trust. What it really means is that the people must rely on government in administration of land to be fair and to make the laws that governs the enjoyment of law, uh, land, which is very basic. It has remained an act in the Constitution, which I believe is a misnomer. It ought to be corrected. And one of, one of the fundamental uh, basis on which uh, society feels secure is ownership of property on land, not in the air, particularly indigenous communities and our farming communities. They must have that sense of security to land and to territory, which, again, I find that in our, uh, in our present uh, orientation and uh, 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 governance is, uh, seems to be a foundation for advancing corruption because most of the corruption we find in the system involves the, uh, uh, the ordering or misordering of land administration where it is expected to be a foundation of security. Those who are rich today, they examine their conscience. They will know that they have climbed on prosperity in the abuse of authority on land. So I, I think the, the leadership question is so critical, is so diverse, but it should not stand alone. The president cannot stand alone. He has a party, he has a community, he has people who should be driving him to do the right thing, not driving him to exploit his position. 
this, this is a hard time. It's, it's very difficult to, to, to really put a thumb on it. Mm. But I think that the orientation of society, the education, the, the values of the society that should be used in advancing the stability and growth of the polity must be addressed. You cannot have leaders in the Senate who are accused of being crooked by a former uh, inspector general and the thing just died there. You cannot have uh, a leadership of, uh, 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 of, say, a governor tried for 20 years, convicted, but for some technicality, he goes back as if nothing happened. So we have to entrench values that will mold us together and give us faith and hope that we will be quit uh, a sensible, dynamic, and progressive uh, society in Nigeria. So leadership is uh, fundamental. But the system by which leaders are sustained or are brought into the system as leaders must be cohesive within the system itself, both social and economic. We don't have leaders, economic leaders, who play the role of uh, being uh, shareholders and uh, threatening the depositors' fund by, by, by taking the assets of the bank. End up with all the assets in Amcon. And if you find it, maybe one or two percent of the so-called leaders of society are involved. Government has to sit up and regularize. That's oh, a well, challenge. Uh, thank you. Uh, General IBM Haruna, it seems uh, the picture looks uh, really gloomy here. Uh, looking at what you are going through, one at a point gets confused about exactly where to start picking up from. But all the same, it boils down to the fact that um, there are lots of deficits here. Deficit in honesty, leadership, and uh, a whole lot of them. Everything is just out there for us to look at. And then see how we'll be able to put the puzzles together and get something better out of it. We'll continue our discussion right after this break, and we'll talk about the, these deficits and this is how trust, honesty, sincerity have become you know, so much of a problem to us and then uh, being values which you really uphold. Still with us, this is Good Morning Nigeria. We'll take a break now. Hey, welcome back. We're talking about forging a common front for national cohesion. And uh, we have a, in the house here, you know, guests who have been discussing this with. As we continue, Ambassador, uh, you know, Keshi, the deficits, how much? I was discussing with us, with an elder statesman some time ago. He said he witnessed the war, he saw it, and he went through it, and Nigeria, of course, came successfully out of it. The trust during the war time, to him now as he feels it, is much more than now when there is no war in this country. Trust between people in this country has gone down to the lowest ebb. And so goes with sincerity and honesty. I mean, when we talk about insecurity, these are all fallouts that we are now facing and lamenting about. How do you look at this scenario? Why did we really lose track and don't find ourselves in this situation? I, I, think it's, I think it's been long in coming. And as I said earlier, it's more like uh, the successive failure of leadership to develop the country. Again, I, I go back to what the elder statesman told you. Um, despite the war and post-war, I, I think we were more united for so many years, perhaps until June 12, and subsequently from there so many things just started to snowball. But the point I keep making is that even from then, no leader came up to say, we need to bring you back from the edge. If you look post, before the, the, the military <laughs> intervened, you know, and by the way, compli complicated our lives, mm. uh, with due respect, sir. <laughs> um, the, the political leaders of the 60s, when they get to the edge, 
they come together and begin to pull back. Today in this country, and as the military did too, it's like we don't give a damn. We can actually fall off the cliff. So be it. <coughs> so the absence of people that we say, look, put a break. Let's honestly begin to find a way out. Let's begin to address, look, this, you know, what, what, what irritates or what makes me angry is that what we are discussing is not rocket science. What does it take to be fair to somebody? The solution has always been there. What does it fair to be just? Mm. The Constitution is very, very clear. People from, with this regime, from day one, people started protesting against the nature and the character of appointments made by the regime. At that point, the first day, shouldn't it have been a change to say, okay, I hear the people, let me change. Instead, it's been consolidated. And the tragedy of all this is that even those appointed to various parasitas have also decided to follow the leadership style by making their institutions look like their local village and not making the institutions look like Nigeria. Again, I go back, people talk of the people, the people. For goodness sake, it's not the people, it is the leadership. If the leadership creates a dynamic that is all embracing, that opens up the door to everybody, that mobilizes the people for a common goal, that inspire, today the leadership is uninspiring that inspires people. As a young man, and I'm sure many of you go, one of the things that inspires, inspired us growing up was the inaugural address of President uh, John Kennedy. And there have been subsequent great leaders who have spoken like Martin Luther King and so on. I make the point again, who is inspiring us in this country? Who is rallying us? Everybody that <coughs> speaks, speaks of his own ethnic group and tribe. We must do this. You must give us this. You must give us that. And all this because, as the general said, we are unable to manage our diversity. Okay, and okay. this is not because the leaders are selfish. Uh, Ambassador Kashi, thank you very much. Let's go very quickly back to uh, our Lagos Network Studios with uh, the former Deputy Governor of, of Lagos. One, one of the points that Ambassador Keshe has just touched on, he earlier uh, said it, it has to do with the fact that when you look around, uh, there appears to be uh, no one or a group rallying the people. Uh, earlier, uh, uh, General IBM Haruna did talk about the fact that we're not getting Nigerians uh, to be driven by certain cohesive sentiments. I just wondered, again, from the point of view of, of, of a, a political leader or a business class or all that, because we are all impacted by the current symptoms of what we are seeing, namely insecurity, banditry, kidnapping, and violent crimes, and all the so-called calls for dismemberment. What can each of the individual groups do. I know that there are calls for national summit, a national summit and all the capacity thing, but in the various communities, in the various states, there are leaders to say, look, what is going on should not and cannot continue, that we cannot surrender uh, to, uh, to hoodlums and those who want to make life uncomfortable for us, not just by mere force, but to say, look, how do we solve our national and therefore local and societal problems. Very much. Uh, a lot needs, um, a lot has to be said for attitudin attitudinal changes. Uh, when Nigerians get to position of power, pride comes into it. People don't want to relate to the people, to the constituency that got them into power. And this is part of where Nigerian problem, you know, is vested in. You have leaders 
that are actually not leaders, that are just there for their own selfish ends. You have um, politicians who go around promising heaven and earth, and as soon as they get elected into office, they don't even live in that community anymore. People have to, to beg to have access to them. Nigeria has become a place where pride and prejudice reign. We need to change. There, there is need for a lot of reorientation. Our values need to be addressed. We have people in office who should not even have been on the ballot papers. We have, you know, because this, this is a topic that is very close to my heart. I don't know why we stopped teaching history in our schools. Because if they are teaching history and co uh, contemporary history, there are so many people in, in public life now and people pushing themselves into our faces that should not even be able to hold the, their, their heads up in public at all. But Nigeria has become a anything goes. And this has now gone down to our children. Our children now to tell them that one, one behavior is bad. They will point to you, somebody in a, in, a, in a high office who has done something worse than what they are doing. We are talking about uh, General Laruno. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you this morning because um, even though the military formed part of the problems we are in because you had recruits that started suddenly building houses all over the place, With no, you know, uh, I, I'm not trying to, you know, to cast blame on anybody. But we are all in this situation. You have people who have already made themselves so comfortable. They don't care whether Nigeria dies today or Nigeria is up. And they are still in the system. They have passports and they have dual citizenship. They are ready to pick up and go after spoiling this nation. So we all need to come together and say this is our country and it must not die. It must not be disintegrated. And it starts with the community. We have others that are toothless bulldogs. They cannot control anything in their vicinity because the people know they have no power. You have uh, the police who should protect you, who is also part of your problem. Uh, 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 the, the government sent up a national reorientation office that should have a widespread, you know, a, a, a full uh, uh, agenda of going around the country, doing visuals and all that of what proper behavior should be. Nobody is funding them. Bad behavior has taken over every aspect of Nigeria. Whoever is on the right now, whoever is saying what the holy books should say, is the one, uh, say you should do, is the one that is in the wrong. And you are a minority. And if you are not careful, you are going to be, uh, you know, extinct. You are going to be somebody whom tomorrow they've done away with. Everybody who is good, are trying to, to survive, to say, don't let me say it, because there are, there, there are assassins out there. There are hired assassins out there that can take people out at any time. And you're talking about, uh, you know, when the pres this, our present president got into office, I'm one of those who put my life on the line that he must get there. Because I was expecting some drastic actions Instead, the people we are trying to do away with, with their ways, their ways that are not okay for the nation, for our, for our children, they are the ones that got nearer to him. And now we are in the situation that we are. These same people now are going back 
to, to now want to topple the, the, uh, 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 the government because he started dealing what he should have done when he first got there. Curb the corruption, put people right, the banking sector, the, 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 uh, the people who have been in government who have stolen, who have looted the nation dry, join APC to be clean. Join this party and your sins are forgiven. No, we, we, have to, we, ha we have to, we have to, you know, try and get, you know, we are all going around it, you know, being uh, th uh, uh, theoretical. We are not actually saying it as it should be. Ambassador, I'm very, you know, you are highly intelligent. But let's, let, let's call a spade a spade. I'm a woman. And I have no other country to go to. I refuse to take second, citi uh, uh, second citizenship anywhere. Let's, le let us make Nigeria the Nigeria that we want. And it's not difficult. We just have to call these people out and let them know we know you. You are not good for this nation. OK, um, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Senator Oji Kutu. Uh, People around him, they should be told, you know, somebody, one of my eminent pastors, call them the gatekeepers. They should be told they are leading, leading this country into abyss. When the earthmen's problem started, they were told, they said, is, is no problem. Now it has, it has become a national malaise. We should nip it in the board. Nigeria is on the edge of a precipice. Let us don't let it fall into it. And it's not by, by disintegration. Let each region be able to, 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 uh, to, to, to succeed. And then let the uh, central hold the power and protect everybody. As it is now, everybody wants to go away. Where are we going to? Together we are, we are strong. When we have disintegrated, you know, any, any little thing can, can destabilize. Any oh, thank you, um, Senator uh, Ojukutu, former Deputy Governor of Lagos State. Ambassador Obi Zoba Shimelo, you are a leader of a social cultural organization. One other thing which uh, Ambassador Keshi said here is that uh, Nigerians <coughs> don't have somebody to look up to that will take them you know, off the brink and then bring them to the center again and then see how things will get better once again. We are heading to, towards separate directions and uh, uh, leaders are just, you know, looking at themselves from their own local enclaves. As a social, you know, as a leader of a social cultural organization, you're one of them. What do you think should be done at that level social cultural organizations in order to pull Nigeria and Nigerians from the brink which are headed to now. Thank you very much. Just like uh, <coughs> Ambassador spoke, we have deficit in leadership. No doubt about it. But our, the major challenge is that our institutions are very weak. Our guests in Lagos talk about the political, the politician who come to power, do I ought not to have been in ballot papers. I listen to her very carefully. If our institutions are strong, the INEC is supposed to have, if we have a process that is very clean, that produce candidate and the, 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 poli the, the political elite, we won't have been where we are today. The politicians don't care about the people because they know that after four years, they come to the people and share rice and beans and tell them that they are going to do the best. And the people do not have confidence in the electoral process. For goodness sake, if we have to get the country right, the institution must be strengthened. The INEC must be given a massive enormous power to independently handle the process of electoral, electoral process. 
People believe that their vote don't count. Imagine in the electoral election day, you see people playing ball on the field because if you ask them, they say, no, you don't need to vote. Even if you vote, you don't vote, your vote doesn't count. They don't believe in the process. And what we're talking about institution, look at the state government. We have three tiers of government under this federal system. Federal, states, and local government. We now produce an emperor as state governors who sit down in comfort of their government house and order, order instruction here and there. They don't respect the, the, the lack of rule of law. I think the recent, in the past few months, the president uh, issued the executive order that there should be local government autonomy. There should be a House of Assembly autonomy. The state government has pocketed the hands of the legislative organ of the government in the uh, various states. Um, Ambassador <coughs> Obizo, but we're trying, we're in short of time. Briefly, what do we need to do to enhance national cohesion? Maybe in, a, in 30 seconds or thereabout. Justice, equity, and fairness. <coughs> Once justice, equity, and fairness is instilled in our day-to-day -day activity within the government and the people, then the national cohesion we're talking about can naturally fall in place. Yeah. Nobody wants to leave Nigeria. Like I say, I'm in Nigeria, and I believe in the project Nigeria. So that's why we're governing our people. That's why we are legitimately constituted as a, as a legitimate, registered organization, a registered body. We are working assiduously with our people, reaching out to the people, going to the grass, mobilizing our people, sensitizing them, oh, giving them good uh, direction uh, all right, of where all to right. go. Thank uh, you very all much. Right. Ambassador Chair Melo, thanks a lot. Is that we are getting pressed for time, mm. and there are weighty issues that you have all raised today. But I want to just get the closing thoughts at this time of uh, General IBM Haruna. Listening to you, you've spoken from your background as a military officer, background as an elder statesman, background as a lawyer, and background as a public information manager. One of the comments that you made has to do with driving the sentiments of Nigerians. And I would say, therefore, driving the positive sentiments of Nigerians towards national cohesion. What can we do in this respect? Well, I think that the three arms of government should be freed from this their stagnation. In, in pursuing public policy. They know the priorities. They must work on getting democracy right. The judiciary should be released so that they can work within the concept that is embedded in the Constitution. Or the, legislature, the legislature should make sure that they pass such laws that the judicial arm will function. And thirdly, of course, let the leadership of the presidential system executive perform to their promise. Yeah, thank you so much, IBM Haruna. Um, lastly, Ambassador Keshi, what's your final you know, take on well, this issue? It's, 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 so because we have a presidential system, I can only pray and urge the leaders to do a deep introspection, to reflect about the state of the nation and whether they want this nation to collapse under them. It is not just one leadership, but the leadership across the <coughs> board. Even the heads of national institutions. Do they want this country to collapse? If they do not want this country to collapse, then there's a need for a change of direction, change of dynamics and let them see the whole country as one and go back to what we did under the Gawan regime, one indivisible country that we all love so much. Thank Ambassador you. Ambassador Joe Keshi, former Permanent Secretary, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and a regular guest in Good Morning Nigeria, would like to appreciate you for your contribution to this very significant discussion today. Thank you. We also would like to thank Ambassador Obizobab Chiemelo, who is Director General of Strategic Planning and Implementation of Rohanese and Dibu General Assembly worldwide. Thanks a lot for being our guest this morning. It's my pleasure. And uh, our deep thanks also to uh, Major General IBM Haruna, 
uh, of course, is a lawyer and a former federal minister in charge of information. They were called federal commissioners in those days before 1979. Abiyam Haruna, pleasure always having you. Thank you. Thank you. And you are a great fan of the program, by the way. Thanks a lot for being around and thanks a lot also for your very useful suggestions. In Lagos, we were joined by the former deputy governor of uh, Lagos State, Her Excellency uh, Al Haja. Shinotu uh, Ujikutu, uh, thank you very much for the comments that you have made and the clear recognition that we have to get out of our current situation. Thanks a lot for being on Good Morning Nigeria. All right, so that's it for us on Good Morning Nigeria today. We appreciate your tuning in. We're back tomorrow, same time, 7 o'clock in the morning. On today, remember, Nigeria is us and we have to rescue it. The solution lies within. I'm and, Kingsley Osadolo. And of course, we don't have any other way to go. It's here. This is the home. I'm Yusuf Nadabu Usman. See you tomorrow.